Somebody kidnapped some SAS soldiers. That don't sound like a good idea. Let's get it. When the soldiers of the British Tier 1 SAS unit stared at their television screens in Iraq in 2005, they could not believe their eyes. The footage on local news channels showed two of their comrades, badly battered, tied to a chair, their faces exposed for all the world to see. Allegedly, the two elite warriors had murdered a policeman and were now to be brought before an Iraqi court with the worst probably yet to come. For the men of the SAS, it was clear no matter what happened in the coming hours, they would not leave their brothers to the mercy of the enemy under any circumstances. A plan to free the hostages was hatched. However, the British government suddenly seemed not to care about the lives of their own soldiers anymore. And, and the whole rescue late. mission- they, Their faces already got exposed. It's already in the hands of the Iraqi government, right? They have a accusation that they killed a police officer, whether it's true or not, we're out of their territory. I mean, the, well, the British are out of their ter territory. At this point, it's up to command to say, hey, we're going to go in regardless, or hey, they say we can't go. I mean, that's a tough spot to be in, honestly. Ching was on a knife's edge. What followed next was a struggle between the SAS soldiers fighting for the lives of their comrades and the political leadership, yes. who were completely oblivious to the situation yes. on the ground. The po politics, bro. It all began on September 19th, 2005, when the operators Campbell and Griffiths were conducting an undercover mission in the Iraqi city of Basra. Disguised in civilian clothes, they drove around the country in an inconspicuous vehicle to shadow a corrupt police chief who had connections to terrorist organizations. This was not just any mission, but an official cooperation with the famous British intelligence service, MI6. Oh, After the spies. SAS soldiers had gathered enough information and were about to leave the city, they ran into an Iraqi checkpoint. Okay. Only a few days earlier, British soldiers had already arrested another police mastermind, and the atmosphere between the two parties was correspondingly tense. To prevent the situation from escalating even further, the highly trained soldiers initially tried to talk their way out of it. But when the Iraqi police officers refused to calm down and suddenly even tried to drag them out of their vehicle, the operators wouldn't take it anymore. They opened fire, wounding two of the attackers uh, and stepped on the gas. Uh, okay, at that point, um, all right, so police chief corrupt. Uh, they arrested one corrupt police chief, but everybody else underneath the chief probably still loved him. So now the other officers are upset and they're trying to arrest these guys. Whatever, false pretenses, whatever. It's their country. Like their rules are, it's different, right? You open fire on them. Yeah, they're, they're not trying to kill them. They're trying to, like, you know, make them back off. So probably an arm shot, maybe in the leg. I don't know. But they're just trying to get away. Shit, man. Shit, man. This went from bad to worse. Not bad. As soon as MI6 found out, they... Nope. A wild chase through half the city ensued until the soldiers realized that they could never get away on their poorly motorized undercover car. Yeah, it's undercover. It ain't going Once nowhere. again, they tried to resolve the situation diplomatically, Ow. laying down their weapons and getting out of their vehicle. However, the Iraqis beat up the soldiers and dragged them to a prison in Basra, where they forwarded their pictures to a news agency. When the soldiers from the 22nd SAS Regiment in Baghdad saw the footage of their comrades, they immediately moved to Basra and prepared for an imminent hostage rescue. I mean, that's what you do. You Campbell get and your Griffiths, boys. meanwhile, took advantage of their excellent training, they which had prepared questions. them for situations like these. They some gave the kidnappers just enough information to keep them alive, yeah. but didn't reveal major secrets. Soon their comrades would burst through the door, kill all hostage takers, and free them. Or at least that's what they thought. That's a crazy plan. Because while but... the captured SAS soldiers were fighting for their lives, their commanders weren't reaching anyone to authorize the rescue mission. Yeah, I mean, bro, what they did, when you're doing any spy stuff, like secret stuff like that, if you get caught, if you can't escape, you get disavowed. You get marked off because plausible deniability. The, the British don't want to say, yeah, our secret SAS soldiers were doing an undercover mission. They got caught and they shot at police officers. You know how bad that looks politically? 
like regardless of the reason, that just looks absolutely terrible. I understand why the big wigs don't want to get him off, but at the same time, those are still your guys. That's still your 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 troops. The SAS, that's a hard-ass unit to actually get into. It's not easy to just replace two people like that. If it was that easy, like, everybody would be in the SAS if it was that easy to replace them. Like, it's not. It's, it's shit. The order I was, was to resolved. simply do nothing so as not to escalate the situation further. Any political entanglements were more important to the superiors than yeah. the lives of two British soldiers. Yeah. The leaders of the SAS did not give up, yeah. but even the general in charge in England didn't answer his cell phone. And soon the soldiers in Iraq were joking that he had switched it off because he was playing golf. In the meantime, the American forces had deployed a surveillance drone over the prison and even offered a squadron of their own Delta Force soldiers to carry out the hostage. Let's rescue. go, Delta! The British appreciated their allies' gesture, but wanted to get their it's guys their, their out themselves. Man. After all, it was not due to the SAS's lack of motivation or willingness, but simply to indecisive leadership that a rescue mission had not yet been initiated. You know, that's the, crazy. The American, the American government was like, hey, we'll help you guys out. We're allies. Screw it. Like, bro, that's crazy. They're willing to risk, risk political involvement as well. That's crazy, man. And Colonel John Lorimer, commander of the 12th Mechanized Brigade and former mm -hmm. paratrooper, finally took the initiative despite the lack of command and sent his men to the prison that's leadership the tanks Not made their way easy. through the narrow streets of basra and set up a security perimeter around the complex ready for but everything? initially had no permission to storm the buildings yeah after campbell and griffiths were portrayed on television as enemy spies thousands of people Civilians. gathered around the police station and tried to break through the british perimeter Molotov cocktails hailed down on the tanks and their crews, who were completely at a loss without clear orders. Yeah, you can't just fire on Occasionally, the there were even out. exchanges of fire. As a last attempt to resolve the matter diplomatically, the British sent two officers to the prison, but they were immediately captured as well. The situation the continued to escalate, and the SAS soldiers had to watch from a distance as the window for a hostage rescue closed more and more. A stroke Anywhere of luck else. would still give them a chance, and one chance was all the highly trained men needed to save their comrades. I'm gonna guess that they got assistance from the actual, uh, where, where are they at? I don't know. They got assistance from their government. That'd be the only way that this goes out perfectly, is if they get help from people that are above the, the, the police chief and all them. That'd be the only way. You have to call in a favor. In fact, the chaos outside the prison gates had become too hot, even for the hostage takers. And so the corrupt policemen decided to hand Campbell and Griffiths over to Iraqi militia. Aware that drones were overhead, they put dishdashes on the elite soldiers, long Arab shirts that made them indistinguishable from civilians from the air. The lone British Sea King helicopter circling over the prison sea and relaying the situation on the ground to headquarters could have easily missed the hostage handover. But but something made the crew take a closer look at the small cluster of people at the edge of the prison. When it became clear that the prisoners were just being loaded into a vehicle, the SAS was back on the scene. While the helicopter relayed every movement of the hostages and their captors, the special forces tailored their plan to free them. The militia placed Campbell and Griffiths in a nearby hideout, and for the British soldiers, the time to attack had now, finally come. They're in a hideout, no civilians. The tanks nighttime. in front of the police station broke through the prison walls, rolled over vehicles, and allowed the infantrymen to successfully free the captured British officers. One of the comes. tank drivers later commented that it was the best day of his life. <laughs> I bet. Meanwhile, the <laughs> SAS soldiers raced toward the militia safe house, which fled in the face of the fearless warriors, leaving their hostages behind. Simultaneously, oh, the operators blasted their way through the doors and windows of the hideout, cleared the building, and freed their comrades without encountering any resistance. Wow. The Nothing relief bad. and joy on both sides was enormous, but from a political perspective, the incident was far from over. No way. As it turned out, the SAS had acted independently, yep. and the order to attack was only meant for the forces outside the prison. The elite warriors had simply not seen fit to gamble with the lives of their comrades any longer and had made the decision to attack on their own. No orders. That's, dude, that is, dude, that's on grounds for disavowalment, man. Like, you guys are the top of the top. 
they're regardless of what everybody thinks they are on a leash and dogs cannot just take their leash off whenever they want to i wonder what the punishment was i can only guess some people got you know relieved of duty i'm not too according sure. to some sources there were even indications that the hostages were about to be executed and the soldiers had saved their brothers from certain death after everything had cooled down, the British leadership subsequently authorized the hostage rescue. However, sure. many yeah. SAS soldiers suspect that this only happened because, because it was the successful. rescue mission was a success. Yeah, if it was a Any failure. complications would have likely left them at the mercy of the press and military courts. However, the operators had tuned all of this out at the time of the raid because neither the end of their that. careers nor the possibility of being in the dock could deter them from rescuing their comrades a brotherhood that no one else could ever understand they took the if you made off. it this far thanks for watching and none of a like of course ah like captain price says when you take the gloves off hands get a little bit dirty did they took the gloves off and it worked out in their favor you know, luckily nothing bad happened to them but nothing bad happened because it was best but yeah man Glad those two got home safe. I'm glad everybody got home safe. I'm glad that the civilians didn't get murdered because they're just listening to the news and they're angry and they're throwing rocks and mollies. Oh, man, crazy. Anyways, if there's any more crazy, cool, or awesome stories you guys want me to check out, leave a comment. Let me know. It's your boy, Miss. Come rate, subscribe. See you guys next time.